Hey, back with another uh, RV how-to, and today we're going to be installing the WeBoost 4G-X RV cell phone booster. Hey, it's TR, and welcome to my uh, somewhat messy workstation. Uh, the UPS man was just here, and uh, you caught me in the middle of uh, planning out uh, my schedule for the next little while. But today I'm uh, back with uh, another RV how-to, and today we're going to be installing the WeBoost 4G-X RV cell phone booster from Wilson Electronic. So anyway, UPS just got here, and uh, let's see what they brought me. Thirty-two times better cellular coverage, RV cellular signal booster from uh, WeBoost, and it's actually Wilson Electronics. Uh, they've been in the cell phone booster business for a long time. Uh, I've used their equipment in the past to improve cell phone coverage at some buildings we had uh, back when I was a geek. Well, I might still be a geek. Anyway, let's see what's in here. So doesn't everybody use a mechanical pencil to open their packages? Got to have destructions. Oh, we got a part A and a part B. Uh, let's get this down here. Contributing to uh, my carbon footprint and cardboard. They make this pretty simple. Step one, find some place to put the antenna. Step two, three, six, and eight. Oh, all right. Not the outside antenna. Let's see what this looks like. Nice, white. So we got some U-bolts and brackets here to um, mount this up to your warranty, to your warranty. Oh, wow, nice thing to the hole saw. Relax. Mounting gear. Power. Drill a hole or use an existing hole. We're going to use an existing hole. Oh, perfect. So uh, you can install this using just 12 volts DC. It's 110 for the booster. And uh, we'll put, uh, we might install this. If nothing else, we'll just leave it in the cabinet where the booster's going. Perfect. That's Wilson Electronics for you. All right, let's see what else we got here. Steps four and five. Oh. So this is the actual booster itself, the mounting bracket, and then the Wii Boost. See, see that? Yeah, that's pretty good. So that's the actual booster. That's going to go in a cabinet right up there. And I guess what we have left is the uh, step seven. See the inside antenna. That I think I'm going to probably. I'm going to do a little bit of investigation here and see uh, what makes the best sense on getting this thing installed. Well, back with you, and it's just been a week since I got the package from uh, Amazon with the uh, Wii uh, RV GXVR EIEIO2 <laughs> for whatever it is. Uh, but it's my cellular booster, and uh, I'm going to uh, see if I can figure out how to get it installed today. Um, it's a beautiful day in Tucson. It's going to be about 80 degrees, so I think maybe uh, we ought to get to it. Sitting here scheming on, I've got 20 foot of coax here. This is just RG6 coax, but it does have, uh, you know, a standard uh, type F connector. And then uh, I think this is a G, but don't quote me on that. I'll have to look this one up. And the idea is that I take this antenna. They want you to mount it back on your ladder if you have one. Uh, my issue is, is uh, my coach is 40 feet long and my ladder is probably 42 feet away from the front of the coach. The other thing I have to take into account is, is where am I going to put the unit itself? The problem with lengthening this cable is, is that the longer the cable, the more signal you lose from the antenna to the amplifier. I really want to run it on uh, 12 volt DC power. But uh, I can sort on that later if I need to. We've got to figure a couple things out. First, how we're going to get inside, and I'm going to use an existing vent. We'll get on the roof here in a minute and take a look at that. And where am I going to put the inside antenna? Uh, that's been on my mind, and it needs to be separated as far as possible from the outside antenna. So we've got to keep that in mind as well. And where am I going to put the uh, transceiver unit, if you will, um, the amplifier? Let's take this off for now. 
I needed to unwind all these cables and get them stretched out anyway so they're not all curled up. It's a pain in the butt to work with curly cables. Trust me, I've got tons of it. What we ought to do is we ought to go outside in the nice bright sunlight and uh, do this out there. Okay, so here we are on the roof and I'm trying to uh, sort out where I'm going to put the uh, antenna. And so I gotta go get a couple more tools. I'm gonna run down and grab a screwdriver and some alcohol and uh, cloth so I can kind of clean this uh, shroud up before I put uh, this antenna on it. This is foam that I installed when I replaced the fridge. I know this goes right into the top of the cabin and above the fridge, which I think I can sneak into and fish that wire through and get it down to the cabinet I think I want to put it in, uh, down in the main part of the cabin. So uh, let's take and drill that out. I'm just going to go right here, maybe out a little ways. I'm just going to snake this cable through. And then let's just push it in there. And hopefully, it'll be sitting out in front of the fridge. As always happens with cables, they have to get tangled up. All right, so I think what I'm going to do here now is uh, this cap back on. It's a son of a gun. Type F connectors use a 7 16 inch wrench. You want it snug, not over tight. I'm liking this already. Before I came up, I pre soaked this, uh, soaked this towel with a little bit of alcohol just to make sure the surface is good and clean. This stuff here, 3M Extreme uh, mounting tape. Good stuff. All right, so now I'm just going to go in here. Self-tapping screws. So you can kind of see that I had to take a lot of stuff out of the cabinets to chase this wire through. And uh, that's probably why I was uh, procrastinating on getting this done. But we got the cable in and the antennas mounted. So let's uh, finish up this inside work. I got to vacuum up these cabinets though and get the sawdust and the drilling dust out of them. Not OSHA approved, by the way. <laughs> All right, so what I've done here is uh, this came with this little snap-on cover which makes it easy to mount. I put some super stick tape on it, just back in, and then I'm gonna put the cables on before I put it in. Just a little tweak there to make sure they're good and tight. Mm -hmm. I think I'm gonna go like this. Okay, I'm not going to plug that in just yet, but that side is pretty much ready to go. Okay, so the only thing that's left is to register the booster. You need to register the booster with your cellular provider, and in my case it's Verizon. So I'm on the Verizon website here. Let's walk through here and see what it takes. Well, this is my workstation and uh, I cleaned it up especially for you today. Sharing with you just a little bit of the leftover parts. This is the 12 volt power supply. I intend to put that in and there's a number of reasons for that and at some point I'll make a video on that. Uh, this is just the mounting stuff they gave me. Um, I love these uh, nice sticky back uh, adhesive type four-way mounts. That was the uh, for coming through an exterior wall. That's why they give you this hole saw. 
that's the exact size to cover that up so their intent is is for you to come in through an exterior wall and then you know go to wherever you got to go um, you saw in my install that I came through an existing roof vent uh, that was abandoned from when I replaced the fridge uh, with a total electric fridge but I will note that the zip ties and the bases are black and typically when you see black zip ties like this uh, those are going to be for exterior use so they're going to be UV resistant a lot of times if you use a white or the cheaper zip ties and it's an exterior environment uh, they're going to rot from UV and uh, probably fail in a couple of years uh, so that's really all the spare parts I had left they definitely give you everything you need to uh, install uh, the system if you install it the way they show you in the manual of course uh, I've not been one to follow instructions very well <laughs> There was only one casualty during the recording. I don't know if you can see that. You see that right there? And then this right here. <laughs> yeah. So I dropped my GoPro uh, onto the uh, gravel and uh, scratched up the case pretty bad. You know, that's what happens sometimes. Uh, I'm thoroughly convinced that it takes 30 to 40% longer to do a project if you're trying to record it. So keep that in mind testing setup here is you can see I just have the GoPro it's focused on my uh, Samsung s4 yeah s4 but hey it works it does what I want it to do mostly I use it for data anyway let's chat a little bit about the application I'm using it's called network cell info light I got it off the Play Store so I have used this before to understand what's going on and it's pretty good I mean you know uh, it gives you the uh, raw data that's coming down from the phone and it uh, shows you some plots about the quality of the signal and so on and so forth right and give you another stats page it'll even show you a map and show you the distance to your cell tower okay so you can see just moving the phone around a little bit we were able to change the signal some uh, I can go and move it over to the table and I'll do that as the second part of the testing program here but let's get started with just some basic testing so I'm running speedtest.net here. Uh, we're catching a test here to see what uh, download looks like. 2.73 megabits, not so good. Upload a little better, but that might be because the network's kind of busy today. I'm getting about 3.3, 3 3.4 up at 109 decibels with the booster off. Okay, so let's go turn the booster on get on the network it looks like it might be on the network now it's looking pretty good so that added one bar of 4g signal and uh, brought up the signal strength to 100 decibels minus 100 db okay i'll move inside antenna a little closer there we go a little better minus 98 it's not too bad huge difference now again this could be network variability but i'm seeing an 8 meg download now and on upload um, it'd probably be pretty good yeah look at that wow 15 16 so on upload that's pretty good I'm pretty happy with that let me turn this around see if that makes any difference pointing it at the antenna it's pretty good we're gonna run again here test it again wow that's amazing 13 14 14 14 megs down that is pretty acceptable right there slow ping okay let's try our little uh, reposition now of this no booster it takes a few minutes I'm sure to uh, register itself on the network but it came up there it comes it's coming up higher good oh well, look at that we're in the green now let's go try a speed test so oh wow wow it's hard to believe but uh, that's 20 megs down that's pretty acceptable I think the upload will probably be pretty good as well and uh, I can live with this yeah it looks like we're gonna get 20 megs up 16 down let's try that again one more time 21 up or 21 down I mean and 20 up wow that's amazing well that's all there is to it uh, the hardest part is probably chasing the cables and getting them inside the coach and not having to cut holes in the ceiling and roof and so on and so forth. But I was lucky enough to have an easy pathway down through that fridge vent, so that made it uh, pretty straightforward. 
and then I snuck the cable up and around and all up behind the cabinets here so you can't see it which is a must for me I don't like cables and things hanging from the ceiling I like to try to keep the wires that are exposed and stuff down to a minimum it just looks better uh, that's the Wilson Electronics WeBoost 4G dash X RV and uh, it looks like it's going to be doing an amazing job. Without the booster, I was getting uh, somewhere around uh, two to three megabits down. But with the booster, I'm uh, cranking out at about 20 to 22 megabits down and about uh, 20 megs up. Is that what it was? Yeah. It looks to me like uh, the inside antenna, the inside transmitter is uh, not going to be all that strong. Right now we're sitting at about minus 85 decibels on the signal strength and I've got solid five bars. So pretty happy with it. It seems like it's going to be working pretty good. The inside distance seems to be a little limited. I'm maybe two feet from the antenna right now with my cell phone to where the in internal antenna is here. I'll show you. So that right there is the internal antenna and my cell phone sitting right there. My biggest thing was more consistent data download speeds, which is important. And then also to be able to sustain a voice call. So uh, let's see if um, we can do that. I'm gonna plug here and we'll just call voice around. Your password, then press pound. So it's Monday today and I've had the unit in for a couple days and I have to say that when I first installed it I was a little disappointed with the range of the inside antenna and I think that's because the device has gone through its initial setup and what I mean by that is, is that there's a problem with these called bounding and what bounding is is that if the inside antenna can see the outside antenna a feedback loop gets set up similar to what you would get in like an auditorium if they turn the microphone up too high okay you hear that wah wah that big the really loud sound well in this case it's just a lot of energy that's being cast back and forth because the signals being boosted and transmitted and it turns into this feedback loop and in the instruction manual when you read about the lights if it's bounding, the lights start to go funky. You know, they'll get red if it's really bad, or it goes yellow if it's probably with some bounding. And I didn't personally observe that. I haven't really tried to yet. And so what they do is, is when bounding starts, they they turn down the inside transmit power until the outside antenna can't see the inside antenna. And then I think they set it there, and that stops any bounding. Okay. I think it has to learn. When I first set it up, I had the antenna all over the place. And I also found that the closer I got to the antenna, which totally makes sense, the better the signal strength was and the better the download capacity was. Now, today, it's Monday. I'm sitting at my desk, as you can see. My cell phone's sitting right here. So on Saturday, we were seeing 104 decibels and we weren't seeing neighbor number one at all. Now today, sitting here at the desk in about the same position, I'm a little further over on the desk, we're up to minus 98 decibels, which is really pretty decent. I mean, although it still shows it's kind of yellow, uh, we got a good solid three bars here, okay? And before, uh, I would barely have a signal at all if I was back here at my desk. We're going to have to give this one a win. Thank you, Wilson Electronics. Uh, have some history with you guys. I've used your more commercial line of cell boosters. Uh, many times in buildings that I had where uh, we just didn't have any cell signal. So I had a lot of confidence when I bought this WeBoost that it was going to do what it said it was going to do. Well with that, I hope you liked what you saw and I hope you find it useful. If you did, be sure and give me that thumbs up. Also, I love interacting with my audience, so please make comments, ask questions, and uh, you can do that below. Don't forget to subscribe. I've got tons of RV how-to videos still to come. Uh, when you have an older RV like mine, uh, there's always plenty to be done, plenty to be fixed. And so I'm going to try to record as much of that as possible and share that with you as time goes on. But that'll have to do it for today. Thanks so much for watching. I do appreciate it. Until we get together again, peace.